Okay, what I got today is I got this LG stove right here. It's 10 years old. It's an LG. Got the number written down here. It's an LRE 5602SS. That's the model number. Okay, and what's happening is the oven doesn't heat up anymore. The the broiler works. So there's a there's a the broiler up there that works. But the oven doesn't, you know, come up to temperature, you know. Uh so and I look down in here, and of course, this is a newer stove, and there's there's no element in the bottom here. So where it is on this model is it's uh, accessed from the back, and there's a heating element, a hidden heating element, under under the floor of the oven. And I guess they did that so that it makes the oven a lot easier to clean. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pull out the stove, unplug it, and I'm going to show you how to change that bake element. I also have... Uh, the the model number for the bake element that I ordered and uh, I got it here. It's uh, it's actually also in the description below. So if you read in the description, there's a link there. You can uh, get it on Amazon.com. And uh, so the part number that we're going to put in is M E E three six five nine thirty two zero two on Amazon.com. So uh, like I say, you can look in the description and get that link and. Uh, so just a moment here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the breaker and then I'm going to unplug the stove and pull it out and we're going to access the panel on the back to change that bake element. Okay, just a second. Okay, so I got that pulled out. Got it unplugged. So I'm just going to take a Phillips head screws out of the back of here, holding this cover on. Okay, that cover off. And look down in here. And what you got is it's the, these two terminals here, this one and this one. And there's this little access door right here. This is where the hidden bake element is under here. So we're just going to take that out. Okay, so to remove the wiring harness from the back of the stove, what you do is there's three screws. There's one up here, one here, and one holding this uh, strain relief clip right here okay so there's three screws you take those out and you can give this a wiggle and if it doesn't come out easy what you do is even though this ground screw isn't all the way through it's not threaded into anything it, it protrudes out the back a little ways so I find if I take this out halfway then this will just come right out okay you see that and I'll show you what I mean by that there's a on the back of it here see that ground screw it protrudes through the back here and it just it sits in it sits in this hole here it's not threaded but if it's if you leave it all the way in it might hang up a bit trying to pull this out so you just back that ground screw off don't forget to tighten that back up when we put it back in okay so you just pull this up enough you don't have to disconnect anything just pull this up here enough like that to access this little door here okay Okay, so you get your two connections here to the bake element, one here and one here. Just pull those off, like that. So the next thing you wanna do is you wanna do a continuity test through the bake element to make sure that your diagnosis is correct, that there's no continuity through it. So I've got a just a uh, standard multimeter here with continuity tester. So we got continuity tester here, and there should be continuity through these two terminals here, through the bake element. And as you can see there, there's there's no continuity through there. So that cons confirms my suspicion that the bake element has an open in it. That's the reason we're changing it. See? So, okay, now what we're going to do is we're just going to take a flat screwdriver and we're going to pry up these tabs here and get this little door off. Okay, to get this little cover off, at the factory what they do is they, they put two little holes close together all along the edge of this cover. And that's to facilitate the removal of the cover. The rest of the cover is not attached anywhere. Okay, so what you got to do is you can use something like a diagonal pliers. If you can get them in there, needle nose pliers, give it a twist. Or a little punch and just break off that bit of metal between those holes all along the perimeter of this cover and then pry it out with a screwdriver and off it'll come. So what this is telling me, you know, I've tried it here a little bit, but it, these haven't been broken before I got in here today. 
And so that tells me that this bake element is the original, came from the factory, original has never been changed. So what is this stove? It's 10 years old, so that's about, you know, that's an average lifespan for a bake element usually. Okay. Okay, so I got that cover out. Now they don't want you really to get in there, I don't think. They, uh, you know, they'll sell you a replacement element, but they don't make it easy to get in there. You've got to break these little tabs off and you've got to, you know, manipulate this thing to get it out. It's, it's stuck on there pretty good. So, you know, I bent it a little bit on this side, getting it out. I'll flatten it out, put it back in. But, yeah, they really don't want you to change the part, I don't think. Okay, so to remove the bake element, once you get the little cover off, you'll find two Phillips screws. You'll find one here and one here. And then there's two little tabs. There's one here on this side. One on this side, and they just you just have to take a screwdriver and pull them up straight. Okay, so just, just take a screwdriver and pull those little tabs up straight, like that, and like that. And then the bake element will pull right out. Okay, I was having some difficulty removing the bake element. It was it was hanging up on something. I couldn't figure out why until I took a look in there and I realized that it's burned out all right. It is, it's coming out in pieces. It's completely, this is how the pieces I've got out so far and I've got to dig out some more. But this, this coil is supposed to come up like this and loop and then loop again and come down here. So the rest of those pieces are in there, so. So here's the bake element. I got it out, came out, out in all these pieces. So roughly that's the configuration there, right? And you can see how damaged it is. It just, like, it must have been cooking in there for a while for this to happen. And actually over here in this spot inside, I had quite a bit of uh, trouble getting, it's like it fuse welded right to the metal that it sits over. There was a piece there I had to break it off. It was actually still in there. It just came out like a piece of hard amber or something. So yeah, that, that's most of it out. And just to give you comparison, it's the new one. So that's what this is what they're supposed to look like. You know? That's what it's supposed to look like. And that's what came out of it. So I think my diagnosis was correct. That the bake element was uh, not not passing current like it should be. I don't know if you can see way in there or not, but near the back there's a piece, it looks like black silicone or something. That's that's a piece of of the bake element that's fused right to that bottom plate. And I've hit it pretty hard with a scraper and it's just wanting to stay there. So I don't know if it's going to interfere with the new new one when I put it in or not. I hope it doesn't. Maybe the new one will sit up above it. I'd like to get it out of there. Don't want to leave any old remnants when I put the new one in. But uh, see, there's no matching blob over there on the other side so that tells me that there's it's not supposed to be there okay so i'm going to try a little bit more to get that blob off of there and then when i do i'm going to put the new element in here okay i got the new element in place got a screw here and a screw here holding it in and if you look down in there i don't know if you can see but there's a tab that the new burner element clicks into it just sits under it there's a little tab facing this way and that u-shaped uh, clip just sits under it and there's one on the other side same thing i don't know if you can see in there or not Get some light on it and there you go see it sits under that little tab and that keeps the burner element centered in this space in there gives it about an inch or so top and bottom and it's not touching the floor of that compartment it's not touching the ceiling of that compartment Okay, I got the little cover back in. What they do is, when, once you've broken the tabs to get this cover out, they have a little hole drilled in the back casing here, and they have a hole in the tab. And you, so you just shift it over. You can turn the plate around, whatever works, and uh, put screw in there and put, a, put your screws back in here. I got this electrical connection mounted back in. I've got the strain relief hooked back up here. Checked all the wiring. Another thing I did here, I was just looking at the end of these terminals, the way they stick out, and I think this aftermarket 
uh, heating coil sticks out a little farther than the original. So what I did was I just bent them 90 degrees here and here so that they're not so close to the, the steel cover of the back of the stove when it goes on. Okay, see that? That's not going to hurt anything. Bent over like that. See that? Okay, I got all the back on, all the screws in it. Now it's just a matter of turning it around, plug it in, turn the breaker on, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've got the stove back in place. I've tested the oven and it works perfectly. I've put a link for that part in the description. Make a comment, ask any questions you want. I'll answer all that come in. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you like, and take care. We'll see you again. Bye now.